Hey, blessed evening to everybody. This is Ed, and um, I'm in my little office cave here. If you can see what's over here, uh, there's the laptop that runs the show there. But, you know, to me, it's not really a matter of all these things here. I mean, I'd get rid of it all in a blink of an eye if the Lord tells me, get rid of it. I got... I'm moving you from one place to another now. And uh, it's not my will be done, but his. But I want us to pray first because I want to share a passage of scripture that is to me, it was personally spoken to me from the Holy Spirit to understand who God is and um, the intensity of his being and purpose in my life far exceeds what I ever thought or knew. And I'll try to get gather all the things that I can think of in terms of this, because I don't have my notes with me here. It's just the scriptures. So I'm going to go right into them. First, as always, I love to pray, and we're going to pray over this before actually getting into it. Father, I thank you. We thank, you know, in fact, those that are listening here, we come together, and we thank you, Lord, for being the most important part of our lives. You're everything to us. Um, we can't be anything without you guiding us and instructing us into all things in our lives. For such a time as this, it's so important. Um, much is going on in this world and much is happening. But greater are you that is in us, and like I said, in us, than anything that is in this world. Um, so... Uh, we humble ourselves before you tonight. Uh, we didn't come to look at a white man, a black man, a green man, a purple man, a brown man. We come to hear what the Holy Spirit is going to speak and minister to us in a way that brings us closer to you. Because if, if you be lifted up, I mean, you will draw all men to yourself. But the thing behind it is, is so much of the ways that we live gets uh, distracted by doing that. And this is where I even have to repent and ask you, Lord, to, you know, help me get back on the right track with you. So uh, this message tonight is a message that you spoke to me many years ago. Um, it is something that still is engraved in my heart. It is something that I do speak to Muslims heavily uh, because there's a lot of information regarding what they believe and that contradicts what Jesus could have done to change the whole aspect. I don't, I, Lord, looking at the scriptures kind of makes me feel like there may not ever have been a Muslim uh, book of the Quran or anything related to that. But we don't know because of the factors of uh, what took place between Sarah and Abraham. And there were some bad things that did happen. And from that, maybe that's where the Muslim movement came out of. So I'm not dis discarding those things, but I'm embracing what you're saying and also being able to minister to those as well. But for the most part, this goes even farther than what... Um, it goes farther than just talking to Muslims. It talks, it's about me and everybody listening to this because it's very, very serious. And um, I just pray that you would bless everybody and let us all come closer to you in the end. In Jesus' name, amen. So we're going to move. I'm going to read this passage, and then I'm going to centralize myself to the designated pieces of Scripture in it. Um, it's found in Matthew chapter 11, and we're going to start with verse 20. Um, and hear what Jesus was beginning to do here. Um, then Jesus began to denounce the towns in which most of his miracles had been performed because they did not repent. And this is what Jesus said, Woe to you, Chorazin! Woe to you, Bethsaida, for if the miracles that were performed to you had been performed in Tyre and Sidon, they would have remained long ago 
in sackcloth and ashes. But I tell you, it will be more bearable for Tyre and Sidon on the day of judgment than for you. And you, Capernaum, will you be lifted to uh, unto the heavens? No, you will go down to Hades. For if the miracles that were performed to you had been performed in Sodom, it would have remained to this day. But I tell you that it will be more bearable for Sodom on the day of judgment than for you. And so I want to target on that last passage right there. Because the Holy Spirit started to speak to me several things. I mean, it really is this entire passage. Because really the bottom line is we're talking about repentance. But we're talking about repentance to us. More than the Muslims. More than anything else that I'm going to share about this passage. But I'm going to start with the funny side. And then we're going to get right into the intense side of this passage of scripture. Um... Here's the funny side. The revelation I got from this passage was Sodom would have remained to this day. Everything that we have ever thought about Sodom would have existed today. We would have seen, I mean, there probably would have been airplane travelings to Sodom and it would be a great place to go. Probably. I mean, I don't know. You know, what I do understand is this. Sodom, from our own understanding and what God actually did, he destroyed it. Um, and this comes with the funny situation where I asked my wife, you know, many, many years ago, Honey, if you died tonight, do you want to be cremated or put in a casket? <laughs> I know what some of you people are saying. Ed, you're crazy with what you're saying. I mean, but that's what I got out of this. This is where the Holy Spirit started to show me something that I had never seen before in the scriptures. And he, and I was like blown away with it. I'm like, you know, because Jesus was saying it'll be more bearable in the days of judgment for Sodom than for you. And that made me think, then Sodom is going to be resurrected in the last days, in the day of judgment. They're going to be right next to you and me in, in judgment. So I'm thinking to myself, they were burnt to a crisp. So anybody tells me there's nowhere in Scripture, and that's what my wife said in response to it, there's nowhere in Scripture that tells me that I need to be cremated. And I says, you didn't read this one. Because this one really talks about what judgment is going to be. And Sodom's going to be there too. And they were burnt to a crisp. So, I mean, I know you know. I know you've read, you know, the book of Genesis. And you've seen that in the scriptures. So, we are not questioning anything here about what happened. But we're, we're understanding how powerful our Lord and Savior is. For all of this that's being spoken here. Because that's just a piece of the puzzle there. That's just that's just the comedy I mean I saw out of the scripture when I first saw it. But the Holy Spirit started getting me more deeper into this. And that was related to, you know, looking at, you know, the days of Abraham. I mean, I started, you know, envisioning that area where Abraham's bargaining with God, surely you won't destroy the city for 50 people. Surely you won't destroy the city for 40 people. You remember that? I mean, I, I could give you all those scripture passages, but like I said, I don't have the notes here. I just know deep down in my heart what I'm saying is that there was a bargaining going on between Abraham and God, and then all of a sudden, you know, when it comes down to 10 people, you won't destroy the city, would you? And here comes Jesus, and Jesus just pushes over, you know, Abraham, so step aside. You don't know what you're doing. And he lifts up his hands, and he says the first thing that he says in terms of the scriptures of Luke 4 and, Luke and Matthew 4, repent for the kingdom of God is at hand. I mean, that was the thing that moved 
um, the people it would have, and according to this, and in uh, you know, I'm going to go right back here, you know, to where it was written here, so that everybody sees this. Uh, and you, Capernaum, will you be lifted to he heavens? No, you'll be go, go, you will go down to Hades. For if the miracles that were performed in you had been performed in Sodom, it would have remained to this day. But I tell you, it will be more bearable for Sodom on the day of judgment than for you. This is intense. I mean, I mean, here is... You know, Capernaum got the miracle signs and wonders. When you go back up to, you know, verse 20, Jesus began to denounce the towns in which most of the miracles had been performed. So here, I mean, I, I, I had a beautiful, blessed uh, posting conversation with a sister in Christ. And we were talking about how some people moved away from the prophetic movement. And this is where I see the prophetic movement being kind of not moved away. It's just that the, the people didn't repent. And this is something that when I get into some prophetic uh, prayer groups and stuff for healing and stuff, the number one thing that I'm trying to tell people is we got to go deeper than just proclaiming healing because there may need seriously repentance and i know some people that are listening to this they're they're apostles or, or prophetess but i'm trying to say that if we don't proclaim repentance in every prayer group that we're in we're missing the mark because really this is jesus got very disappointed at cities how much more would he be disappointed with me in a prayer group that all it thinks about is trying to heal people uh, and really, we have good intentions. We want the Holy Spirit to move. But I really like what one brother was also saying. You know, this and this goes into other aspects of the uh, of the uh, scriptures in the Bible. As we pray amiss, I mean, the James four four, um, because of our own pleasures. You know, we are asking God for prayer, or you know, we're not guarding our hearts. And I think that's in Isaiah 55 in terms of fasting and praying. There are certain things in the scriptures that tell us and instruct us on the correct way of doing certain things, and we should follow through with them. Um, but um, going back to this, I mean, yeah, I mean, repentance is critical because I know when I'm talking to somebody Sometimes it's more like, you know, well, before we get into praying for healing, I want to end up getting to know a little bit about your life. I mean, where are you in Christ? Or do you have anything that is causing uh, a sinful behavior that you're hiding from God and you don't want anybody to know because um, you're afraid? You're no different than a Adam you know, he was afraid to really let people know what was going or let God know what was going on. Um, that is a natural thing. I mean, for all of us, you know, we have fears that initiate in our lives. But over time, if we get to knowing God in a deep, uh, passionate way, those fears don't become something where they're running something in our lives. But God's truth and his word is running everything. And in this case here... You know, people would be repenting. And then all of a sudden from the repentance came the miracle signs and wonders. Um, but Jesus came around Capernaum and Bethsaida and, and showed those miracle signs and wonders. But no one wanted to repent. They wanted to stay in their own luxuries of their own pleasures. And they, they thanked Jesus, you know, thank you for the healing. I mean, I no longer have cancer. I mean, but I'm still going to go back to my old ways. And that's not what Jesus wants us to do. And this scripture is so dangerous. You come in along this way now, now that you just heard that it is so dangerous, you're already accountable to God to hear it. And you're already accountable to God to do something either for it or against it. But it's up to you. It's between you and God because in the day of judgment, it's going to affect your destiny. Because, I mean, I mean, basically, I mean, I'm just quoting the scripture here. I mean, there's going to be some sort of accountability in the day of judgment. 
And some people may end up saying, well, I don't believe in what you're saying, Ed. It doesn't make sense. But there's just too many other scriptures I follow. Uh, you know, let's just go back to this because I don't want to bounce around and, and not kind of tell everybody the power of the scriptures. So there's two things that we talked about now. First, the funny side about cremation and being in a casket and the bargaining chip of Abraham with God and Sodom and how Jesus, if he was there at that time, which he really was, but if he had actually done what he said here, it would have changed the entire Bible. I'm serious. I mean, there anything that was talking about Sodom and, and how bad it is and how it's going to go one place or another, it would never have happened. I mean, that's interesting to me. But Jesus said it here. You know, if the miracles had been performed in Sodom, it would have remained to this day. So I know Jesus... You know, I mean, it's like in Isaiah, you know, the Lord's ways are greater than my ways and his thoughts are greater than my thoughts. That's what I see in this here. This Jesus is just saying, I'm God. I'm, I am, me and my father are one and we can do anything we want. We can do anything we want. And, and that's the beauty of how I look at everything around me in life today. I hear both sides of the coins with situations like, some people hate this and and they like that and they proclaim these different things but really the bottom line behind it is is god has to be the one that actually ministers to us and shows us these things that we really need to have growing inside of us otherwise it's just ourselves and i i i don't want to play that game i don't bash churches I've always said this many, many years. I never bash churches. I love all the churches, including the Catholic Church. The only thing is, is when I'm being confronted, now that's a the difference there, when I'm being confronted by what I believe, that's where you, you cross the line because I'm going to give you everything about Jesus and it may really get you really upset at me to the point where you want to nail me to the cross. So, and I'm okay with that. I mean, the Lord told me that when I enlisted into the army with Jesus, that that might happen. I mean, I love my persecuted brothers and sisters in the foreign countries. And sometimes I feel as though I'm there with them when I hear about what's going on. And I'm saying, Lord, you know, I mean, this is, a, I mean, this is hard for me. This person, you know, as I heard with one pastor in China, you know, the the children are put into sex trafficking, the wives are put into slavery, and the husbands are being murdered. And the awesome thing behind it is the husbands are lifting up holy hands to God saying, praise be the Lord Jesus Christ who was and is and is to come. And then they're, they're killed. I mean, I, I've heard stories like this, and it hurts me. Because I feel this, I feel the, 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 the loss of a brother that means so much to me. So really the bottom line behind it, I mean, I feel for the body of Christ. I value people more than myself. I mean, and that's just the way I am. Now, I may not be exactly the way you want me to value you because I align it to scriptures. And if you can't, you know, give me an understanding of what you know, then it's as though, I mean, I can't follow that. But there are people that throw out scriptures to me, and I'm like, oh gosh, Lord, you know, forgive them. Because really the bottom line is, you know, one of the scriptures I've learned recently is, um, I think it's Matthew 7, 6 or 6, 7. It says, cast not your pearls before the swine. Because there are people that, don't care about what you say. And it's like, I don't care what, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to unload everything that you're wrong about. And I'm like, go for it. I mean, I love it. I mean, there's nothing I can do. I mean, I'm not going to bless you if you don't want to be blessed. <laughs> so going back to the scriptures, number two, we already went through that, um, you know, about the bargaining chip with Abraham. Um, this third one, um, I know there's more to this. 
but this is the one that hits me and you. Um, but I tell you, verse 26, that, you, it, that it will be more bearable for Sodom on the day of judgment than for you. Now, this is where the Holy Spirit started to unload a couple things in, in this, and I, I only know one at the top of my heart right now, and it is one that I really deeply keep in my heart heavily. Number one is, um, you go back to Sodom, and you see that in the book of Genesis, um, you might see it in some other parts of other books, and those books might have been built and written at the time of the, the deterioration of the city. Um, they didn't have 66 books of the Bible. They didn't. But you do, and so do I. And we are more accountable to God that we respect and obey and, and understand these scriptures more, you know, these scriptures, because God has given us so much more than what Sodom is. So that's why I really find that when Jesus is saying it'll be more tolerable for them, because they didn't have what you guys have today. That's what the that's what the scripture is telling me here. I know, I know. Some of you are going to say that is not true. That is not the case. And I'm saying, you can say whatever you want. But I'm going to end up standing believing that maybe God was serious about saying that. Maybe God really meant that to be. And when I end up saying that that's not true, I'm being no different than what Jesus is already saying in verse 20. Then Jesus began to denounce the towns in which his miracles, signs, and wonders had been performed because they did not repent. They did not come to an understanding of humility and humbleness before God, and saying, you know, Lord, maybe you're right. Maybe maybe Ed's right with what he's saying here. I need to really dig into understanding these 66 books, because really the bottom line behind this is it can affect what goes on in the Day of Judgment. Now, I don't know what's going to happen in the Day of Judgment, All I, but I, do, I can only base it on it on... You know, the G Jesus is going to separate the, the sheep from the goats. And I don't know what the, sh the goats look like or what, you know, what kind of lifestyle they had, whether they were actually believers. But I do see that with believers, John chapter 7, when many will come to Jesus in the last day saying, didn't I prophesy in your name? Didn't I cast out demons in your name? Didn't I do wonderful works for you in your name? And you will profess unto them, depart from me, you workers of iniquity. And, and and that there is a, a thing where you didn't have a relationship with God. You didn't really understand what he was really purposing in your heart. Now, this is something that is really birthing out of me. It's, it, it, it's, it's coming out of me like a faucet because this was stuff that the Holy Spirit was speaking to me that I never heard from anybody. I didn't hear, no one ever, you know, comes Sunday you know, in church. We're going to look at, uh, you know, the impenitent, the unrepentant towns. <laughs> Let's go to the book of Matthew 11. I mean, I don't know. I've never had anyone speak to me about these things. But then that's the way the Holy Spirit does with all of us when we get into the word and we start digging into it. And they're like, you know, really, Lord, you know, I mean, I go back to like Matthew 5, you know. You know, after the Lord speaks about, you know, anyone who lusts upon a woman, you know, has already committed adultery with her in his heart. You know, anyone who, you know, if your eye offends you, pluck it out, you know. And I love what one pastor said, you know, it's going to be interesting to see guys with eyes plucked out and a patch over it. And we're going down to church together. We all have our patches. They're like, yeah, you're Christian. Yeah, I'm Christian. Yeah. I mean, but. You know that's not a literal. That's a not a literal sense that it's supposed to be done that way, but what really Jesus is trying to say, you got to get rid of whatever it is that it's attacking you, and that's where for us, even for me, what it was for me many, many you know six seven years ago, was 
I started to make myself a commitment to God and I said, you know, I'm going to resolve this problem in my life if it's the last thing I do. I'm not going to go specifically to church, you know, one church and stay there because that pastor may not be helping me at all. I'm going to go looking all over the place. I'm going to find the answer if it's the last thing I do. And I found it. I mean, it took me a, a couple of years before I got into the program. And then a couple of years in there, I became a facilitator. And then I started to see the problems all over the world. Because I had people that, I had men come to me on Zoom from Zimbabwe, from Portugal, uh, Belgium, Canada, Australia. Um, I mean, uh, what is it? India. I mean, there were they were all over. And they all had the same issues and problems. And what was really interesting about it is they all had been in church at one time and they left it because they did not get the help that they needed. And this is something that I knew in my heart that the Lord started to speak to me. That's your calling, Ed. And I'm, I'm going to lead people to you that are wounded, wounded men that need to be healed and need to become warriors for me. And God's going to do that. I mean, he's already done that with me because I, every week I kind of, or every other week, I do meet up with men with issues and I love them. I try to help them to understand that I'm not like those churches that you have to run away from. I mean, I want you to get to know Christ. I want you to be healed. I want all the wonderful things in your life to be manifesting that you're not going to be bound up like you are. I mean, I want you to have joy that I have. I want you to have peace that I have because God has given me these things and it's not for me to keep. I give it away to you. If I had a million dollars of blessings, I'd give it to you because that's how much God loves you. He loves you even more than what I could ever do for you. So anyways, going back to the scripture, do you see what I see? And that song, you know, back in the... Christmas time. Do you see what I see? You know, um, just being funny. But the th whole thing behind this, and I'm sure there's a couple more things that I, if I had my notes, I, I would address what they are in regards to these passages. But look for it yourself, read it, and start to. And here's another thing I mean, there are some people that I know that tell me, and I've, I've had this, you know, a few times in my life, not many, but I've had leaders or some pastors tell me, you know, you're taking things out of context here. And, and in, in what I just shared to you guys, this may be another, this will be a fourth one here and we'll close at that. That may be true, but I'm taking things out of context. But my question back to the one who's saying that to me is this, what does the Holy Spirit do? Does he correct us? Does he guide us, give us wisdom and instructions on what to do in our lives? You see, when the Holy Spirit speaks, you can't question it. I mean, it may be, well, because the theologians back then, you know, said it, we have to do things this way, this way, and this way, and this way. And I'm saying, no, if the Holy Spirit says, I want it done this way now, would you respect the Holy Spirit speaking through me to you so that you can be blessed? Because the bottom line behind this is if you don't, you lose. I mean, it, it, it's not me. You, you reap what you sow. I mean, is the bottom line with this. I mean, but the, the whole bottom, and, and I'll share to you a worldly perspective of this that kind of, that always constantly changing. One of my favorite movies is A Beautiful Mind with Russell Crowe. And, and the whole story about John Nash John Nash, when he came up with his thesis on, you know, governing dynamics, the, the, the professors were amazed. And the one professor came up to him and said, you know what you just did? And, you know, and he's like, what? You know, he says, you just destroyed 150 years of knowledge. Because everybody was thinking things had to be done this way. But your message it's completely changed the whole perspective of what we know about economics. And that movie, if you really re watch it, he won a Nobel Peace Prize. There were so many things that changed history.
because of his thesis. So many organizations. And I'm thinking to myself, Lord, that you're, you're that way too in the scriptures. But if we never, ever get to knowing that God can change those things and make it like, well, those theologians back in the old days, they were all wrong because Ed came up with a thesis that came up like, but it's not me, it's the Holy Spirit. You see, we have to abide by what the instructions are given to us. And this is what the Holy Spirit spoke to me in this passage, which is so intense. It's intense with me because I realize that I have been blessed tremendously by God. And so is everybody else, including you who are listening to this. You are tremendously blessed with understanding the truth of you know, who God is and what he is and how he can move and change things over time. But it's not changing the scriptures. It's just making them more bolder, stronger, powerful, because this is what, you know, it's, it's the, the uh, second P Timothy one, seven, he doesn't give us the spirit of timidity or fear. He gives us power love and a clear mind he doesn't go in an ex i mean paul doesn't go into details about what that power is what that love is and what that clear mind is that's where we end up saying you know lord you've given me some really powerful powerful things and gifts and i don't feel like i've used them yet I really don't. And that's where another conviction, maybe this is number five now because I don't have my notes with me here, is I'm not doing exactly what God wants me to do. And if that's the case, this is where the rubber meets the road. When are you going to do it? And that's when I, I, I often, in my prayer time right now, I'm hearing the Holy Spirit saying, when are you going to do it? And all I'm saying to the Holy Spirit right now is, I need a little more confirmation about what it is that you want me to do because I don't want to blindly do this. I don't want to get into a ministry, full-time ministry, if you're leading me into full-time ministry, and that was not the place you wanted me to go. I need to know, Lauren, a little more about where you want me to go because if I make a mistake on this, I mean, I, I all I can say is, I mean... I, unless I need to be drawing lots, I mean, that, that's the thing back in the old days and in the Old Testament and stuff, they drew lots about, you know, what direction we should be going. And then I would need to do that with a lot of brothers and sisters and draw lots about what direction I should go. Anyways, everybody have a blessed evening. And I'm going to close with something very special right now. This is very... I, I really sense the Holy Spirit really leading me to this because it's written in the scriptures that, you know, Jesus, you know, began to denounce the cities. He was disappointed at them because they would not repent. And I'm wondering where you're at right now. Is this city that you're in, is where you are at, you know, um, uh, do you really need to repent because of what has been said here? Uh, there may be some things that I've shared that um, it's not easy. It wasn't easy for me. I mean, I'll be honest with you. A lot of times when I read scriptures and the Holy Spirit says, you know, that's you in the church or that's, do you, do you see what you look like here? You know, I mean, I, I'm really trying to, uh, you know, I don't want to steer away from it. I'm more like, well, Lord, I mean, let me know more about this because I don't want to be anything other than a mirror image of you. So that's my heart. My heart's desire is to, you know, please him and, and always do something that is going to, you know, it, it's not, you know, the end of judgment day when he says, well done, thou good and faithful servant, you know, that, really matters much to me. It's Revelations 3.21. I mean, that's the thing that blows me away. Because if I overcome all the obstacles that Satan bound me up in my past, now and always, moving forward, Jesus says to me in that Re Revelations 3.21, I will grant you the right to sit next to me on my throne as I sit next to my Father on his throne. 
And that is the most beautiful place I want to be, is right down at his feet, thanking him in tears. Thanking him that he didn't give up on me. He didn't give up on me in all the massive amounts of sins that I had. I was no different than the woman with the alabaster box. I had great sins. And I kept taking them back and then, and then getting rid of them, taking it back. It was a vicious cycle. And I know that some of you might be listening to this and saying, I have that problem where, you know, I have worries one time, then I get to know God and then I, I feel like it's all gone and I'm happy again. And then I start to worry again, or I have anxieties or I have anger issues, I, whatever it may be. It is a device that the enemy always knows about you. And that's where James chapter one says, you know, that, you know, the enemy knows, you know, we're dragged away with our desires and enticements. And, you know, and when temptation comes, it brings forth sin. And sin, when it's fully con conceived, it brings forth death. So the whole aspect behind it is, what was God's purpose for us being, what was his pur purpose for being here on the planet in the first place? And it was really to get us back to the garden without the, the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. It's really getting to the point, to the place where we're praising God and we're, we're, we're you know, we may not see him in the morning and we're just walking around in the, wild, in the, the garden, but we're eagerly waiting for him because all we want to do is glorify him. I mean, it's, you didn't see that with Adam. But Jesus came as the second Adam, and he showed us basically everything about his relationship with God. And he says, do the same thing. Do the same thing. And the beauty behind it is I have so much treasure to give to brothers and sisters. It, I mean, but the thing is, is I will never give it to somebody that says, you know, you're all full of it, Ed. I mean, you're wrong. Because I know in my heart, I'm, I, I just can't bless you until... There is a form of repentance. So going back to repentance, you know, David had this check that he always did with God in Psalms 139, 23, 24. Search my heart, Lord. Search my heart. Every aspect of it. Search the, the wounds. Search the sinful behavior. Search the bad behaviors. Everything that is against your will. Lord, Help me, help me to understand what those things are. And I will not turn away from them. I will not hold on to them. If you're saying that needs to be gotten, you need to get rid of that. I will do that, Lord. And I pray for the life of those that are listening here, that if they have this problem where they sense that they're being tied down by a vicious cycle that they can never get out of. It could be anxieties, worries, doubts, fears, it could be anger, it could be a, uh, a habit-forming sin of alcohol, drugs, or pornography. There's so much of it out there. There's just no end to what the enemy is doing. But it, we need to renew our mind. And, we, and, remind, and, and that all begins in repentance. It's asking the Lord, forgive me. But aside from asking the Lord to forgive us, Lord, we need help. More help than just that. We need a church that's like a hospital that has programs that will help uh, bring recovery and restoration to a, a, a person who's struggling and, and be able to meet their needs as James chapter 2 speaks of. Lord, there's just so much. And Lord, I want to be more like that. And I know you want me to be more like that. That's an awesome thing. So, Father, forgive us of our sins. Forgive us of all of it, of our past. Help us to understand. Let us come to a, a determination and commitment to you that we will resolve this problem, all of these problems, so we can become overcomers of all the obstacles in our life and sit next to you in your kingdom forever. Hallelujah. Next to your throne forever. Hallelujah. But Lord, let it begin where you, you, you've forgiven me. I, re, I receive your forgiveness. I, I, I no longer want to end up, you know, nailing Christ to the cross because I went back to my old sin. Oh, Lord.
forgive me for doing that because that's really what I'm doing when I end up not leaving my sin at the cross and taking Christ off the cross and putting him in my heart and he lives in me because I love his word so much. Heaven and earth pass, will pass away, but you said your words will never pass away. I, I put that deep in my heart so that I would not sin against you, Lord. I would not do anything other than what the word says I should do, and I would carry it out. So, Lord, I pray, Lord, let us repent. Let us get the washing of your word in us once again, and let us start to look at that more than we look at our weaknesses. And let us know that when we do have our weaknesses, you would be our strength to overcome those weaknesses and somehow, some way, we'll become overcomers sooner than we know. But we need to follow suit with what your perfect will is in our lives. And that is to turn away completely and live a holy life without sin of our past behaviors. We may stumble tomorrow, Lord, and that may be the learning curve for me to repent there and learn. But I don't have a habit in my life constantly nagging me and keeping me in bondage. That is the difference. Father, thank you for this message. Thank you for what you have spoken. Lord, definitely something to learn and something to keep in our lives now and unto judgment and forever because it's all about you that we choose to live a holy life, Lord, and not of ourselves. Not what we think in our heads who your will is, but you speak in our head. You move and live in us. You have your sense of being in us. You dwell in us. So have your way, Lord. We bless, we, we give praises and thanksgiving and joy and peace. We, we lift you up and say, it is well with my soul. And we give you glory, honor, and praise. In Jesus' name, amen. Have a blessed evening. Bye.